Hello and welcome to our summer poetry, art, and music camp. Um, and anyway, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Mr. Burns and this is my art studio. Um, as you can see, this is where I create. Um, I just finished this piece um, not too long ago. Um, I do a lot of work with um, like structures and houses and old houses and things like that. And this is where I actually I create. So I'm like, really excited to see what you guys will be creating for our summer uh, camp with our poetry, music, and art. So as you can tell, we're doing the art part, and that's what we're here talking about today. So um, as far as equipment and things like that go, um, I'm going off of whatever you guys have at home. I know not everybody has a huge array of like art supplies like what you know I get to use here, but again, it's what I do for a living, so I have lots of art supplies here at my house. Um, but I do want to show you guys, and let me switch over to my, uh, my two cameras here. There we go. Um, what you can use or what you might have on hand. So let me scooch over here. So if you have any watercolors, great. You can use those if you want to. You don't have to if you have them. Um, glue sticks you might need. You might need some scissors. Make sure if you're um, at a young age, make sure you have adults around and make sure that you're being safe with your scissors. Um, you might need a, a cup of water, which I have here, um, if you're doing any watercolor. Now, quick thing on the watercolor, you guys should know this by now, but if not, that's okay. It depends on what your art teacher has taught you in class or what you've done at home. Um, if you're going to be doing watercolor, make sure you work on a paper. Like, this is a nice kind of thick paper that will hold um, watercolor. But if I was going to paint, like, on, you know, like, printer paper from your printer at home, or if I was going to print, like, on, or try to, uh, sorry, paint on um, construction paper, I mean, the paint will stick to the paper, but it's going to get really wet and soggy, and you might have a, it might kind of buckle and crinkle and maybe not have the look that you're really going for. So you might want to consider what paper do you have um, at home to use the materials that you have on hand. So if you only have, like, maybe some thin paper and something that may not hold watercolor, then you can, of course, you can use, um, we've got markers here. If you've got markers at home, Sharpies are fine. Again, just make sure you're only working on the paper, not drawing on the wall. I've got young kids at home. They try to do that quite a bit. Uh, crayons are fine. Colored pencils are fine, too. So, again, it's just about what you have at home that you can use uh, for this project. So, there's not really one material that you have to have, okay? Um, I always say sketch things out in a pencil first before you start using uh, colors. But some people like to work with like maybe pen right away. That's fine too. Um, I do anytime I do some sketches and things like that. I use pen a lot, um, or pencil and pen as well. So let me go and scooch back over to my other uh, camera. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an example of um, the one of the poems that I picked. So I didn't pick the, any of the poems that you guys have that we sent. And the reason why I did that is because when I taught elementary, I always remember that if I did an example, a lot of people try to copy the same example that I did. So what I did was I picked a poem that you guys don't have, so nobody copies the one that I have. Okay, so um, I, the thing is when I teach art is that, you know, I can show you what I can do, and I know what I can do, and I'm still always learning, but... I want to see what you guys can do, but also I learn from you guys. So I, I learn from your ideas as well. So you may learn some ideas from me, but as you're creating, your mind works a little bit different than mine does. And so you might see something or create something or approach something a little bit differently than, than I do. So I enjoy seeing what you come up with on your own creation. So I picked um, a different poem. Now, all these poems that you guys have, is from the book uh, Where the Sidewalk Ends, which is an awesome little poem book um, that just has a lot of um, a lot of really fun, kind of funny poems for kids. This book was actually on a, um, a kind of an open shelf that was in our library when I grew up, when I was growing up in Farmer's Branch, Texas at Montgomery Elementary. This book was always up and out somewhere where we could see it, we'd pick it up when we read it. Um, and so even though there was one to check out, there's always a free just kind of copy just that you could pick up and look at. So this is by Shell um, Silverstein. So great book. I recommend it. It's really fun. Even as an adult, they're kind of fun and silly to kind of read and go. So the one I'm doing is called Band-Aids. You know, like the Band-Aid when you get a cut and you put a Band-Aid on. Okay, so I'm going to read this to you, and then I'm going to show you what I came up with, okay? 
So, I have a band-aid on my finger, one on my knee, and one on my nose. One on my heel and two on my shoulder, three on my elbow and nine on my toes. Two on my wrist and one on my ankle, one on my chin and one on my thigh. Four on my belly and five on my bottom, one on my forehead and one on my eye. One on my neck and in case I might need them, I have a box full of 35 more. But oh, I don't think it's sort of a pity. I don't have a cut or a sore. So this person has no cuts on them. They just like, like to put band-aids on them. And I remember when I taught elementary, some people would be like, I remember I had some kids that say, look, I have a cut, and I didn't see a cut at all. But they're like, I have a cut, and I wouldn't see one. It's just because they wanted a band-aid just to put it on. So I think this person in this poem just really likes wearing band-aids. So I did a quick, um, not, I didn't take too long on this, but um, I did record a video that shows the very, very beginning of this all the way to the very end of how to do it. So I used a lot of different materials, which it's called mixed media. Um, and so here is my band-aid up character here with all the different band-aids, okay? So um, I used a white mixed media paper that can hold some watercolor. Okay, I mean, I, you can tell I did watercolor here and the lips and the eyes and the hair. I used a pen to kind of get all the darker lines in with a pen. Um, I used construction paper for the band-aids and I drew a pen with those. And then I used scissors to cut those out. And then, um, and then I used a glue stick to glue everything down. And then I just chose like a fun kind of yellow color for the background. And I, I probably could have done something in the back if I wanted to, but um, this is just kind of a very quick example, just so you get an idea. So the whole thing is that we're, we're creating an illustration of the poem. So an illustration is like a drawing or painting um, of word. You know, so if we read something and then we want to illustrate and draw what, we're, what we read or what we heard. And uh, to put it into a picture. And so that's what you guys are doing with this whole project is we're taking these poems, we're taking the words, getting some ideas from these words, and then we're creating a picture with the words. And then you're going to do some music on top of that. And so also, but I want you guys to think about, think about any time, let's think about a film, okay? If you're watching a film or you're watching what's called a trailer, which is kind of like, I call it a teaser, you know, like it kind of gives you a couple ideas what the film might be about. Um, there's like this mood that starts to happen, like sometimes it's happy and joyful, you know? So if you have a poem that seems kind of silly, maybe you want to pick some silly song or silly sounds to kind of go with your silly drawing. Um, or if something seems a little sad, maybe you want to, pick something that sounds like maybe a little bit more sad um, and it kind of sets the tone and the mood of your illustration um, or your poem so the poem might be sad then maybe you draw something that looks maybe a little sad and then maybe you have music that sounds a little bit sad if you have if your poem is silly then you create something that's kind of silly and you create sounds that are silly so think about um, kind of you're putting the whole thing together right you want it to be what i call cohesive it feels like everything belongs together um and so keep that in mind when you're coming up with your illustrations and your music for your project so um, um on this video i'm going to attach the uh quick time lapse video it shows me working really really fast so you can kind of see how i put this whole piece together but remember you're not doing this poem you have a different choice of poem so i just picked the band-aid one for your example so thank you guys. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to look at the video. Sorry, I know it might be a little bit long, but, um, you know, that's just how these go whenever we can't teach in the actual classroom. We've got to do these here on, on the video. So hope everyone's safe. I'm looking forward to meeting you guys, and I'm really forwarding to see what you guys create. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon, and see you soon.